Anyway, so in my paper, what I have is I have a summary of the other cases, oops, and indeed I list them, and it sort of seems as if there's not much happening there, but the good news is I have a table, and in the table you can cross-reference, and then you can go back to the links, and then read up on the whole long story, if that uh, is the story especially excites you, but we can go back here. Again, from an academic perspective, you have to do something like this. Where are the PhD students? You have to do a diagram. You do this in Microsoft Visio, and uh, it just helps your case when you want to get published. So this is the financial gain we would prefer. They decide to leave, no doubt they did that download, announce their departure, and go. However, it doesn't always work that way, and that's financial gain. For sabotage and retaliation, in, uh, it seems that it's mostly the, the more they know about IT, the better for them. And what they do here is insert slag or logic uh, bomb into the system. And what that means is check for something. And many times, I still have five minutes though. And many times, many times that something is, am I still on the payroll or am I part of this team? And if the answer is no, it executes. Uh, what they do is create a backdoor entry into the system before they leave, before they leave. Anyway, we have that there, we have that there. And I just want to get to the uh, conclusions here. When it comes to insider threats, there is plenty of literature out there. It is chock block full. We have the government agency, insider threat mitigation, everything you possibly want to do here. Carnegie Mellon University, they have this uh, common sense guide. It's very readable, very good, almost everything that you ever want to do here. Microsoft, they talk about, oh, we can even analyze our data. We'll start off with the resignation data set, and then we'll calculate how many files were printed or downloaded or copied to a USB drive. The problem there is it's all too terribly neat. And you need this resignation data set, then you go and analyze People do their dirty work before they leave, before they announce their resignation. So here are my conclusions after reading 80 cases. Number one, the internal controls existed, but they were circumvented. And why they could be circumvented was, it could well be that the person circumventing the controls was the same person that instituted the controls. They knew how to get around their own controls. Don't rely on the standard controls like that. However, have a group brainstorm each case on its merits. So and so is leaving. How clever are they? And how angry are they? And the angrier, the more we have to think about exactly what they could do and try and um, put something uh, in place to stop it. This was one extract from the case. Benzer became volatile and it took an hour to get him out of the building. When it takes you an hour to get the person out of the building, they are very angry. Within minutes of leaving, he shut down the email server and the application server that controlled the company's production line, warehouse, distribution center, and the ability to take orders. I like this, mainly because I thought enough myself, but it took reading all those cases. Educate employees while they are employees that accessing a protective uh, computer is a federal felony. Let them know that you can get this 115 month sentence. Post employment attacks, theft of trade secrets are not merely civil matters. Watch this one at the bottom again. Uh, he shut down nine of Citibank's regional computer centers. And this was his note to his uh, fellow employees. They was firing me. I just beat them to it, nothing personal. Upper management need to see what the guy on the floor is capable of doing. I took one for the team. You see, now, taking one for the team, we will all do it, won't we? If something was unfair at work, they take the coffee machine or something like that. But he didn't bank, uh, bet on the fact that taking one for the team would give a 21-month sentence. That's uh, 21 more than what he was expecting. Watch this. We have a GAO uh, talk about employee training and awareness. They have an insider threat program, which is mandated for the federal government. Here we go. And this is what I found most interesting. Educate employees on the methods that adversaries take to recruit trusted insiders. And this is 
probably most relevant to the defense force. Tell them how they will be recruited by bad outside people to further their aims. Let them know when you get the nice lunch, when you get the, all the nice goodies that come your way unexpectedly. I'm not sure how they recruit, but educate them on how you get recruited to be a, a trader as such. And we still have it, uh, reports 2020, 2021, military personnel divulging secrets or classified information to the enemy. And here's my last slide. <clears throat> Why do the insiders get away with this? And in this book, it talks about the fact that management inherently have a bias. And their bias is to think that employees are good. They want to stress loyalty, team spirit, trustworthiness. They want to stress how much of a team we are and all the good things that go with the team. In the field of security, they talk about little sharing takes place. And this is about the cases, the insider and sabotage cases. And at least I'm hoping that my research paper is one little piece of the puzzle to share what has been done and what we find. Uh, by the way, I, I, didn't, I forgot about this. This is WikiLeaks, the Sony file. I don't know if you can remember that hacking case. It was massive. Uh, Sony was hacked, and here, the Sony hack was an insider breach. I just point that out. Whew. 